Hey guys, my name is Ren, and I'm bad at scheduling. But more importantly than that, I'm bad at art. Today I've got a watercolor painting that I did. It is one of the first watercolor paintings that I've actually finished. I know I already uploaded one video that has some watercolor in it. However, I didn't actually spend a whole lot of time doing that, and I don't really consider that an art piece as I was just messing around and swatching colors for the most part. Downside of this being one of the first watercolor paintings that I've actually finished is this isn't watercolor paper. This is actually just done in my regular drawing sketchbook, which actually ends up kind of biting me a little bit later on. For the most part, it handles the watercolor just fine. Obviously, this isn't the best idea for finished pieces, but it is good enough for doing like color thumbnails and things if I was just doing this as like a color study or a practice, which I definitely am just doing it as a practice. It, it's fine, it works fine, but it definitely can't hold all of the water that I really want the paper to hold. That being said, overall, it was a fine process. Everything went about as smoothly as I expected it to, if not better. The colors that I use in this piece are brilliant red, phthalo blue, and yellow ochre. They're all from the Reeves watercolor set that I swatched in the watercolor video that I have uploaded previously. And I actually only use these three colors. I thought that the best thing to do for me would be limiting my palette as much as possible because since I really don't know my way around the medium, and I don't know what I'm doing at all. By limiting my palette, I'm making sure there's less things I can make mistakes with. I can make mistakes on the drawing portion. I can make mistakes on the paint application portion. And I can make mistakes on my color placement. But by limiting the amount of colors that I let myself use in this piece, I was able to limit the mistakes that I made in actually mixing colors. Using too many colors, you have a tendency to have paintings that end up looking muddy. And by only allowing myself to use three of my paints, I actually think that it worked really, really well in making sure that I didn't end up with muddy colors. That doesn't mean, however, that I didn't make a couple mistakes in this painting. I was really, really happy with how, at this point, all of the reds are looking. Um, I was a little concerned at first because the red that I used right away, I just went in with the straight brilliant red color. And honestly, I don't think that I should have done it. I think I should have started right away by adding a little bit of the other two colors and diluting that down, but I was able to thin out that paint with a lot of water afterwards, which dulled down that saturation a lot, which is really what I was trying to do by adding water, so I'm glad that that worked out. The color that I ended up adding into the knuckles, I mixed a bit of that phthalo blue in, so it's a little bit more on the cool side. Um, the thing about the brilliant red color that I really, really like is that it is a very warm red, which means that it's much more heavily on the orange side of the spectrum. And that's okay because when I mix in that phthalo blue, I'm able to pull it back to that cooler side of the spectrum just a little bit, give it a little bit more depth, which ended up working out really well. After that, I used some of all of the colors, actually. I tried to make sure to keep it as not green as possible, and I do a pretty good job at first of keeping it from being green. Um, I, I just added a little bit of that blue in to a mixture of pretty heavily just the red, but also a decent amount of that yellow ended up in there. So I tried to keep the shadow tones purpley without being too purple and blue without being too 
green, so I was balancing a lot of wants in that regard. And I started keeping my shadows really, really light because I didn't want to go in with anything too saturated that I couldn't lift or fix at all. One of the biggest things that I noticed while doing this painting was that I am very hesitant. And while I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, I do think that it is kind of limiting my ability to really take chances. I think a lot of my art is pretty reflective of that. My inability to let myself go for those really, really dark tones or those really, really rich tones. So that's definitely something that I'm starting to keep in mind so I can potentially work on. After laying in the shadows on the right side of the hands, so just on the opposite side of where the light is cast for the most part, I went in, I added a little bit of shadow in underneath the knuckles, um, and then this is where I jump into adding a lot more yellow. One of the mistakes that I definitely made during this process was I pulled the red everywhere. And I probably should not have pulled the red everywhere. I didn't mean to, but I started out kind of needing to when I added that brilliant red so saturated and so undiluted directly to the fingertips the way that I had. And also the fact that I'm not using watercolor paper means that I can't just pool water in a place and let it dry. I really do have to pull it out because otherwise my paper is going to break. The issue that I was having with where I'm at right about now is that I added way too much yellow and it's green. That the right hand, or the hand on the right side at least, all of the shadows turned green. Everywhere there was blue, it was just green. So I pulled as much of that color off as possible with some paper towel, and that was the right decision. However, this is around where I start to rip through my paper a little bit. There aren't actually any holes in the paper, but on the pinky finger of the hand on that right side, the paper got really, really thin and definitely started doing that peeling, beading thing that paper does sometimes when you add too much water and it's not watercolor paper. Have I mentioned enough times that this isn't watercolor paper? I should probably have used watercolor paper. After lifting a lot of that yellow, I did go back in to add a bit more yellow back in, but this time the yellow that I used was much, much, much more red. The reason that I did that was because if the red is added into the yellow, the way that I mixed it the second time, it is much less likely to make the blue shadows green than it is to make them purple, which is what I was aiming for and I should have realized beforehand that my yellow was too saturated and I didn't but I am able to salvage that quite a bit which is good. I then went in with a darker mixture of that phthalo blue and a touch of the yellow ochre and a touch of the brilliant red. I wanted to try to keep this pretty saturated for the most part. Obviously, I didn't want to go in just directly with the phthalo blue because I saw what happened when I went in directly with that brilliant red color and also with that overly saturated yellow color. Once the first layer of that darker blue did dry, I decided that it dried a little bit too light still and that I thought that I might be able to push the saturation just a little bit more. And so I did, and I'm really glad that I did. I pushed it even closer to using that straight, totally saturated phthalo blue color. I didn't use it just like straight out of the tube or anything. It was still mixed just a little bit, but it was much, much closer to being exclusively that blue pigment. And I think that it turned out really, really well. 
big downside about this video though is actually that I lost a lot of footage. I didn't realize, but my camera had run out of storage towards the end of the painting process. I didn't miss a whole lot of painting. What I did miss was using a marker to clean up outside of the lines and then taking a red ballpoint pen and adding in just a little bit more definition. I know some people consider that cheating, but I'm trying not to get too down on myself about it. So I do have a little clip of the end result of my painting. So that'll be at the very end. I am gonna wrap up my voice over here, but thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video, and I will see you in the next one.